a brand new series. But first, we are three subscribers away from 500. So please hit that thumbs up button and of course, subscribe. <laughs> Yo, what's going on here, Classical? Welcome back to a brand new series due diligence! Let's go! <laughs> I'm so pumped. I'm super excited to announce that we're going to be going over every single hero in depth. So you'll have no questions whatsoever when it comes to any hero, SNS Plus, in the game. So with that being said, sit back, relax, and let's get our due diligence on, baby. Let's go. Here we go. First things first, episode uno. Episode one, baby. We're jumping straight into the tree spirit faction. And we're starting off with good old... I'm but a harmless flower. Renika, baby. Let's go. The thorned bud. First things first, we have to understand who she is. She's a tree spirit. So when it comes to the faction bonus, this is a tree spirit faction hero. They counter nightfall heroes. However, they are countered by beast skin heroes. AKA when it means countered, it means 25% attack bonus. So if she attacks a nightfall hero, well guess what? She's doing 25 more percent damage than she normally would against any other faction. However, if a beast skin hero like the Phoenix attacks her, then she's receiving 25% more damage from the Phoenix. Oh, 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 baby. And the class she is in, she is a priest. Very, very pertinent to know, okay? So with that being said, first things first, to understand your hero, you have to understand is, is she more offensive? Is she more defensive? Well, only one way to find out. Let's deep dive into the skills, okay? First things first, I already know what y'all are gonna think. What does CS stand for? Yep, I didn't figure this out until last week, until I asked Hero Clutch. I'm like, hey, what does CS stand for? I'm sitting here thinking of every other answer. Like, is it critical skill? Is it critical, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. CS stands for core skill, okay? So with that being said, she is an S hero, and let's get reading, here we go. First things first, we have Storm of Thorns, level three. Huge advice, make sure you read level one through level three, because sometimes there'll be some differences, and they will make a huge difference when you read them, okay? As in level two could be completely different from level three, and it's very, very easy to confuse the two, especially if just one word is off, and there are a few heroes like that. So Storm of Thorns says, Throw thorns at three random enemies, dealing 200% attack as damage with a 70% chance to deal 200% of attack as damage each turn for three turns. The good old damage over time, D-O-T, baby, dot. Let's go. Okay, level two states, increase base damage to 250% and damage over time to 300%. Okay, and level three, increase targets to four and the burn chance to 100%. I'm pretty sure they mean burn chance, as in her percentage of the damage over time effect. So you're guaranteed, pretty much. So right now, she's kind of seeming like an offensive type hero. Yeah, you could play a little defense, but I would definitely increase her offensive abilities based on Storm of Thorns number three. Okay, moving on to the first core strength. Here we go. Or core <laughs> skill. <laughs> I messed it up already. Vine Chain. When Renika throws thorns with a 50% chance to dispel three buffs from the target. Hoo hoo, baby. Level two, increase buff dispel chance to 70%. Level three, increase buff dispel chance to 90%. And level four, increase chance to 100% and remove four buffs. Really quick, a buff is simply, just to put it into perspective, if a hero, let's say, grants the Phoenix, you know, 20% attack damage for two turns. Well, that's considered a buff. So if the Phoenix was hit by a thorn, then there's a high probability that that buff would go away. So, and how do you unlock level four? Well, it comes down to the relics. You need nine of nine legendary relics. So yes, you need red relics. These bad boys right here, okay? I don't have any for her, but it is. I'm but a harmless okay? flower. Moving on to the second core skill we have is Thorny Protection. Basic attacks grant a shield equal to 200% of attack, attack, to one ally in the back row, okay? Level two, increase shield strength to 300% and level three, increase targets to two, okay. So if she's in the back row, that means there's only two allies next to her, which means they both are guaranteed a shield, which guess what? The shield's based off of attack. Very, very crucial when it comes to Renika. 
Okay, moving on to the last skill we have. When Renika is on the battlefield, she gains 50% faction bonus. Oh, baby. Really quick, there is a huge discrepancy when it comes to the faction bonus. There are two types of faction bonuses, as in, you know, Nightfall versus Beast Skin, the 25% the we just showed up on screen. And then you have the faction bonus, as in if you put three, four, five, or six of the same heroes on the same battlefield, they get that faction bonus as well. However, Hero Clash confirmed that, that it is affected by these levels. However, another person inside Hero Clash said it's not. So I'm going to get some verifications, and I'll let you guys know in a future video. However, it is what it is. Level 2 increased faction bonus gain to 75%. Level 3 increased faction gain to 100%. Not bad at all, okay? Level 4 increased faction advantage effect to 125%. Unlock condition, 3 exclusive legendary relics. Like I said, back to the relics, you need 3 of 9 red relics, okay? So that being said, we are not done yet, okay? Awakening skill. When HP falls below 50%, increase debuff resistance by 15% and received healing by 25% for three turns. Not too bad. It, it, it's okay. Okay. Now, moving on to the final piece of the puzzle here we have is our exclusive gear skill. And this is very, very crucial when it comes to majority of heroes. Okay. Level 10. After casting Storm of Thrones, Renika increases her control immunity by 10% for three turns. Kind of sucks, to be honest. Level 20, increase health regen of Thorny protection to 20%. That's actually not too bad. Level 30, increase the control immunity of Thorny protection target by 10% for three turns. Like I said, increasing increasing her exclusive gear skill simply is just for the basics, the HP, the block, and the attack. And I would look at you know level 20 and 30 as bonuses pretty much. However, when it comes to all the other heroes, I wouldn't focus on her too much or even at all. As you can see, she's still level 10. Very easy to get to level 20, but level 20 to 30, I, I, don't, I don't see it. Now, the biggest question of all is what ruins, what armor, what artifact would I put on her? Now, my answer is going to be based on what I have left when it comes to ruins. However, I will give you my answer if I put anything on her as in like, you know what? My Phoenix doesn't need those attack ruins or judgment ruins, you know? So first things first, all her skills are based on attack. She, when she grants a shield to her allies in the back row, two targets, it's based on attack. So main focus is attack. So when it comes to the good old ruins, I would go with... Okay, here we go. When it comes to ruins, I will go with judgment increase attack, okay? And as you can see, I'm just going to slap these on. Right there, already 20% plus attack. Now, when it comes to the other four ruins, I honestly kind of would recommend Apocalypse, man. Hands down, I would recommend Apocalypse 100%. Okay. And the reason why is because... Skills deal 50% of attack as armor ignoring true damage to the target three times. When the target has a shield, deal 150% attack as bonus damage. Attack, 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 hands down. She is definitely 100% an offensive hero. I wouldn't even consider making her a defensive hero, hands down. So the game plan would be able to get her attack up higher. So now when it comes to the good old talents, what would I choose? Now, the talents are simply based on who you are facing, who, who is your enemy. So if there's Natalie on the field, I'm probably going to go with Shadow Assault. I'm going to target her. If there's just Alvarez and Dragonic on the field as their primary tanks or, or, or big hitters, I'm going to go with Persistent Strike, hands down, one of those two. When it comes to Mythic Talents, I'm probably going to choose either Weak Points or... I would actually go with Selfless Protection because, yeah, she is an offensive hero. However, I feel like having a little bit of defensive strategy in her is very, very pertinent, as in Selfless Protection, okay? And thirdly, when it comes to Transcendent Talents, since your attack is high, I'm probably going to choose Wrathful Curse or... There really is no wrong answer. Wrathful Curse or Violent Recovery is a good one for defense. And then when it comes to Eternal Lock... Or pst, eternal unlock. <laughs> I read it. Eternal talents. I'm going to play the defensive card with her and go with the good old Rampart. You know, when it comes to more shields for her heroes. Like I said, yeah, she has a high attack. However, she's not going to be your primary source to do main, 
she's not going to be your primary source to do major damage in the battlefield. So she's going to have a high attack, be on offense. However, she, her defensive categories is going to equal out to the Eternal Talents, Rampart, and the good old Selfless Protection. Because you're going to have either Natalie or Alvarez or Dragonic or, or Phoenix in front of her. That's why, like I said, you need to identify which hero is offense, which hero is defense, and which ones you want to mix together. She's perfectly good on offense, however, as a secondary in the back when it comes to defense as well. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm all over the place, I know. However, when it comes to armor, what would I focus on with her? Honestly, like I said, attack, attack, attack. So I'm going to go over to my good old Alvarez. Held in the hands of and darkness. as you can see, we're just going to unequip all of these. Uh, unequip. Okay. I'm going to go back to her. I'm but a harmless flower. Look, 319,000. Whew, baby. Hands down, that's nothing compared to if I got that level 20 or something, okay? The reason why I would choose these is because attack, 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 renaissance, stats, raging, attack, baby, let's go. All these are attack, attack, attack. Let's go. Boom. That's how you do it. Just saying. And then finally, when it comes to the good old artifact, hands down, like I said, it's very, very iffy because it all depends on what you have left over from your other main heroes. She's, she's a type of hero where she doesn't get used that much, so... What's left over, I low-key would probably slap on the Sacred Splendor for the attack, hands down. I never use this. I really don't. But if you use it on someone else, it's okay. However, if I had any option to choose, I think I would choose Sacred Splendor or maybe an Abyss item, maybe? It just sounds so goofy putting an Abyss I item on her. But, um, I once lived in peace. Attack, HP, armor penetration? Ooh, 100%. Yeah, Devil's Bone Spike. Going in on her. Let's go. Too easy. One of those two, like I said, my answer is very, very subjective because it all depends on who your heroes are with her, who you're facing, and what you already have equipped on your better hero. Hands down. I would never slap these runes on her if they're being used by Phoenix. It's just that simple. Okay? So hopefully that made sense. Episode 1 of Due Diligence of Renika. Let's go. That was super fun and super exciting. Hands down. Thumbs up button, of course, and I'll see y'all in episode two <laughs> of Due Diligence. Greatness manifested.